This craft has gotten a surprising amount of attention recently, and if you're just here to see it fly, you can skip to this timestamp. But before talking about this craft, I'm going to first talk about Cinewhoop footage in general. Then we're going to talk about this thing's flight performance, and then I'm going to talk about the DJI Avada for a little bit. And then I'll show you something else that I'm working on, which might be really interesting, and hopefully it will be in the next video. So first I want to show you this clip, which is a clip that I shot just a couple days ago, and I'm showing it to you as an example of what is not particularly good. So to the untrained eye, this might look fine, or maybe a little bit jarring. But to anybody that has experience looking at Cinebook footage or shooting Cinebook footage, you'll immediately notice that this is not really a useful clip in any way. Now, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time with my backpack in the back of my car and my quad in there, the Cinebook in there with a battery that was half charged. Nothing on the craft was set up well. The camera was way too high of a tilt to begin with and I didn't have time to adjust it. Couldn't change any settings on the GoPro. I just didn't have time. And I just went for it. I got whatever I could get. The number one issue with this clip is that it is just way too fast. Way, way too fast. Us in this FPV community, we are extremely enthusiastic about FPV footage and showcasing what our crafts can do and how great our tunes are. But in the real world, people putting videos together, they have no interest at all in any of that. They're just looking for a different angle of the same thing so that it looks interesting. And that does not include fast flips and movements. They generally want everyone, not just everybody, generally wants slow, controlled, very high quality movements. And that's really what we're aiming for when we use a Cinewhoop. And I do use a Cinewhoop the vast majority of, of whatever I do these days because I'm not usually chasing fast things. So the five inch really doesn't come into play for me. So I tried to hide this, this poor setup and fast speed by trying to showcase the scenery rather than the subject, which is the model, but whatever, let's move on to the craft itself. So this is the Octo, and the reason why I came up with this idea was just because I was trying to figure out how I can slow things down tremendously. And so through my experience, I know that smaller props and more ducts slow things down a lot. And coaxial also slows things down, but it also adds a whole lot of inefficiency and way too much noise. So I didn't want to go that route. So I took a just a basic Tooth Fairy 2 frame and I designed, redesigned some arms for it and had them hold all these ducts and all these motors. And it sat in the corner of my room for well over a year. I've shown it in other videos, shown it on other places on my on the Facebook group. Nobody really cared until recently <laughs> for some reason. And, um, and then I had this flight controller come across my table, which was made by TuneRC, and they were making this a while ago, and they asked me if I had any requests, and I gave them a bunch of requests, and then six months later, it magically arrived, and it has all the things that I requested, one of which was four extra motor out lines, which I wanted to use for servos for a plane, which I will use at some point. But in this case, it worked out perfectly because I could just pair it with the 25 by 25 ESCs that we use on our flight controller stack, which is the only stack that I know of. We made it before COVID started and then COVID hit and all the development stopped across the whole industry. So unfortunate that that happened. I personally think the 25.5 by 25.5 platform is excellent because you can use it for whoops all the way up to eight inch crafts. But never mind on that. This craft is using that flight controller along with that ESC stacked on top with the capacitor diode pairing that we have, which is a spike absorber as well as the capacitor action. And all this stuff works really well together and only gives me, only allows me to build this craft with only two boards plus a Vista, which works out really nice and clean. I didn't build it for a year because it would have been such a hassle to try and cram everything in there and I'd have to use analog and I didn't really want to use analog because I don't use analog on anything but my tooth, tooth picks or uh, baby teeth. That's all I really use analog for anymore these days. How does it fly and does it achieve what I want it to achieve? So I'll sum up the overall goal of this thing and flight performance, which was to slow everything down by saying, if you take a craft that goes 100 miles per hour and you cut the speed in half by 50%, you get a craft that goes 50 miles per hour. That's a big, big decrease in speed, 50 miles per hour reduction in speed. However, if you look at the minimum speed of that craft, which is the minimum reasonable speed that you can fly it, which might be 10 miles per hour, and you cut that in half, that's only five miles per hour less. This is a lot of what's happening here. 
the three inch ducted Cinewhoop can fly slow-ish. Not very slow, maybe like 40 miles per hour is its comfortable cruising speed, 30 to 40. And if you cut that in half, which this does, its speed is drastically less. It's probably around 20 miles per hour is its comfortable cruising speed, which is a lot less. However, at the low end of the spectrum, the slowest speed is not actually a whole lot less. So while it does kind of feel more stable in the air, does not do any dives or flips or anything like that, it is very efficient to fly. It's actually more efficient than the three and Cinewhoop somehow, which tells me that the ducks are actually doing quite a bit in the in terms of efficiency. Uh, it's it's not really meaningfully useful to fly, to build and fly this thing and maintain it above all, because you're not really getting any benefit out of it. Additionally, the nuances about this particular build is that the motors are just too small for the size prop and the duct system. This is using 1303 motors. You really want to use a 1603 or a 1604 size motor for this prop size. When we started experimenting with the Cinewhoop class and we started looking at the motors, we jumped to the 2203 size, which was excellent, but then we kind of landed on the 2303.5, which is what we have right now in the store. It's, it's the Cinewhoop motor. It's still, as far as I know, the best Cinewhoop motor performance for any general Cinewhoop three inch with a GoPro on board. And so this thing, if you wanted to do it correctly, you'd have to use a larger motor, but that would also mean that you would lose efficiency. So the motors would definitely draw more power and your four and a half minute flight time on the same general capacity watt hour battery as the three inch version will be cut down substantially, probably well under four minutes. So <laughs> that kind of logically throws this craft out as an option. And I did want to make the arms available in the store, but at this point, anybody that wants to have these arms on their Tooth Fairy 2, just message me and I'll, you know, send you the file. You can get it cut wherever you want and and go crazy with it. <laughs> Contact Brain 3D for the ducks because he's already got them printed or got them ready to print. So now let's move forward. Oh yeah, there's other little nuances. Because the motors are too small, you get this like yaw hunting issue where it just can't really like maintain its yaw hitting easily like really locked in it doesn't have a really solid yaw heading which is annoying and then if you're flying through like trees or something it will um get leaves stuck in the ducts because they're so small the leaf covers the entire duct and then the whole craft kind of jumps up at you which is kind of wonky so now let's talk about the dji avada this thing i don't even have one i've never seen one i've only seen like a couple videos of it flying i've had a couple people talk to me about it like high up people Actually, people like GoPro talked to me about what I thought about it and, and what they think about it. And they actually said something really, really interesting, which completely resonated with me. When I looked at a bunch of footage about this thing, I could not believe how easy it is to get slow, stable, controlled, brainless footage out of this thing. The, the camera quality, the image quality is not as good as a GoPro, nowhere near a GoPro. I would love for it to be better and the field of view is not really that great either. But man, that thing will stick a hover without you touching it anywhere. Like it'll hover everywhere with no problems. It's got cameras to look at the floor. It's got the barometer. The performance of DJI's just stay in place is incredible, truly incredible. And the things that this thing can do slowly cruise around a house or slowly like back out of a tight situation is something that the best FPV pilot in the world would struggle to do if they could even do it at all. I'm saying it again, I've said it on Facebook. The things you can do with the Avada are something that no FPV pilot can pull off. Now, of course, there are limitations with the Avada and I personally am not gonna be buying one because the video quality is not there. And also the controller is not very good for it. You can't pair it with the, the, the FPV controller from DJI, so it's not really useful to me. But in general, it's a really incredible craft. And they kicked me out of their, their marketing kind of group completely. Like they didn't like what I said or anything, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me. Still, I'm very impressed with that craft in general. Don't really recommend it, but definitely impressed with it. So now let's look at something else that I'm working on which is this four inch that's sort of somewhat coaxial with guards because a lot of people prefer guards over ducts. Now, I personally prefer ducts because they do slow things down more, but I'll also take guards because you can move 
faster if you need to. So I'll talk about this in the next video. Hopefully I'll have it built up and ready, but this is a four inch, which is super wonky and interesting. But we'll see if the days of Cine whooping is numbered because people are putting naked GoPros on the Avada and getting really stellar footage out of it. Plus that flight time is just really, really interesting. I hope this was really interesting. Thanks for watching. Floss your teeth. Please floss your teeth. Very important. Take care. Bye-bye.